Greetings everyone, this is the second entry in a series of how-to videos on how to use our IRI product called DarkShield. In this video I'll discuss the searching and masking of NoSQL databases. Uh, what I have currently displayed in front of you is our IRI workbench, a graphical user interface for the creation and execution of IRI jobs, like uh, DarkShield jobs in this case. So from the list here of DarkShield wizards, I will select the new NoSQL search and mask job wizard. This is the first page of the wizard and it is here we can indicate the project folder we will be working in, the name of our DarkShield job, and the subfolder name our DarkShield job will be residing in once created. We can also in this page indicate whether this will be um, a search or mask or search and mask job. So the second page is where we'll select the location for the data class library we intend to use. Uh, once a library is chosen, we can review our available data classes and masking rules. These data classes and masking rules all reside in my IRI library for my NoSQL demo project. So also in this page, uh, we have the option of deactivating and activating data classes. If they're deactivated, they won't be available for the scope of this dark shield job. And we can also add or remove masking rules as we wish. And here's the full list of masking rules that we can apply and create. The next page in the wizard is for assigning masking rules to individual data classes. Having this level of granular control over how different PII types are protected is very useful if you have requirements for different levels of security. For example, a reversible masking operation may be required for names, but social security numbers have a higher level of security restrictions and therefore require a masking operation that is non-reversible, like redaction. Moving on to the next page, it is here the NoSQL data source is provided. The data source is the data silo where PII discovery will take place. When configuring the connection for a NoSQL silo, we can choose to either create a connection or reuse an old connection that was previously created. Uh, currently, as of April 20, 2023, we support NoSQL for MongoDB, um, Elasticsearch, and Cassandra. In the future, we are planning on adding support for databases like Couchbase, Cosmos DB, Dynamo DB, OpenSearch, and Redis. So when configuring a new connection, various credentials and parameters may be required based on the silo type. I can uh, display to you the different variations for connections. This would be for MongoDB connection. As you can see here, um, it takes in a URL that would uh, potentially include th some things like uh, your password and username, port and host name, uh, the database name, and depending on your scope of operation, whether you're doing a database-wide uh, search or search and masking operation, or whether it's on the collection level, or if you were working with grid FS buckets, large um, binary files would be large large files would be stored in these grid.fs buckets here. Elasticsearch. This takes in some parameters like hosts, uh, port number, the cluster name, the index. Optionally, uh, you can take in usernames and passwords. And similarly with Cassandra, multiple hosts, port number, key space, table, data center, username and password. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be working with MongoDB. So 
So I'll plug in my URL, make a name for my connection. And I'll do a collection level operation. And I will read the collection called messages to. If you look at my MongoDB compass here, you can see the content inside. I have a collection called message to and database dark shield. You can see some PII like names, emails. Hit finish. This will be also to MongoDB, and I will write Mongo out. Connection string. And I will write to a different collection in my output. It'll be masked call message two. And finish. And click finish. So opening up my .dsc file that was created from the Dark Shield wizard. So as you can see, my source and target are the same, except for I'm writing to a different collection than what I was reading to. I'm reading from message to and writing to mast underscore message to, which is a, would be a different collection for the output. Um, if we had chose to output to the same location, it would overwrite the original. Um, alternatively, you could also um, read from MongoDB and write to Elasticsearch, or read from Elasticsearch and write to Cassandra. Um, in this instance, I'm reading from MongoDB, the same database, uh, but I'm reading from collection message to and writing to a different collection so that I can preserve my original test data. And I'm using these data classes with their data class matchers to match on names and social security numbers and emails. And then if any matches are found on these data classes, the associated masking rule will be applied on those data classes. So now to execute my dark shield job, I can right click, go down to run as. And I have the option of doing a search job, a mask job, or a search and mask job. A uh, search job would just be if you wanted to discover PII and annotate where that was found and what was found. A uh, masking job would be a separate pass operation where it would then consume the annotations of the search job to do remediation. Or you could do a single pass search and masking job, which is what most people usually do as they're just interested in masking their, their data. So I'm running my job. All right, I got some results here. These are the results of my masking operation on my collection inside MongoDB. All right, it gives me some information on what was found where and the masked uh, replacement values that were put in place and what data class uh, matchers were associated with them. All right, so I'll just go ahead and minimize this and then I'll pull up my MongoDB compass again. Let's go ahead and refresh this. 
All right, so a new collection has been made called mass messages. If you remember, that's where I was writing my output to, my mast output. So this this was the original values. Let's see what happened after masking has been performed and placed in this collection. Okay, so the names have been masked because I had a data class matcher for names. And if you look at my emails, they've all been uh, masked also. Let's see what the original was. Ah, so so this is format preserved encrypted. So you can see that the mast output preserves the uppercase. Uh, and lowercase uh, specifically and it also preserves the special characters so when looking at this you can tell that you know this the original was uppercase and that it is an email because it preserves the at sign and the dot it just um, manipulates the actual character values and I believe there was a social security number matcher but I don't know if there's any social security numbers in these though it does not appear to be but this is a, a demonstration of using our dark shield uh, job with no SQL for searching and masking operations and in our next uh, tutorial video we'll discuss uh, dark shield working with relational databases Thank you. Looking forward to speaking with you again.